The first thing I want to talk about is that uh, when you talk about the soul and when you talk about the heart, the heart and the soul have needs. They have essential needs, just like the body has needs. And one of the essential needs of the heart and of the soul is to be to have oxygen, to have food and water. Just like the body needs food and water, just like the body needs oxygen, the heart and the soul need its oxygen to stay alive. And the oxygen of the heart and the soul is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That what that does, it's literally food for the soul. You've heard this expression. But it's at, it's literally feeds the, the soul. And so one of the things that sometimes we do that starves us spiritually is that we we deprive our hearts and souls of oxygen. Simple as that. And and, and what are some of the ways we do that? We do that, number one, the, the, the most... Um, extreme way in which we deprive our hearts and souls of spiritual oxygen is when we're not praying. When we don't pray, or we don't pray uh, as we're told to pray five times a day, it's like depriving the heart of, of its oxygen, of the spiritual oxygen that it needs to just be okay and stay alive. This is just to stay alive. Just as the body, it needs, it requires oxygen, Right, just to stay alive, and then beyond that, it needs other. It has other needs, but the most essential need of the body is oxygen, and it's the same thing with the heart. That 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 the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, first and foremost, our salah, is what is keeping our heart spiritually oxygenated. And then, in addition to that, and those of you who have heard me probably in any recent talk, I've given this prescription because I truly believe in this prescription to keep the heart. Uh, spiritually alive and that is number one the salah and that you know taking that as just like breathing the second thing I recommend is downloading an app called my dua now my dua m y d u double a at the end is a is just a, simply an app you spend 99 cents as as someone quoted me best 99 cents you'll spend um, best investment um, what it what it does is now on your phone it, it's a collection of these supplications from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah that the Prophet ﷺ would say. Now, I want you guys to understand, you may have grown up hearing about these supplications. Oh, I know dhikr. Dhikr is saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. That's all true. But I think what has happened is that because we sort of grew up with this, maybe we've taken the power of these things for granted. I know I did. And, and what you'll realize is that these things are gold. These things are like 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 um, vitamins and minerals for the heart and soul. It's like water and food for the heart and soul. It's like oxygen. And so when you have this app, what you can do with this app, and this is like kind of like the bare minimum daily routine that I uh, recommend. And I do myself, and, and if I didn't do it, I couldn't really survive my life. And that's no exaggeration. Uh, and that is that the morning supplication. So in the morning, after you pray, you open up your app, and there's morning supplications. You click on it. It's going to give you a list of about 25. So that might be overwhelming for people. It takes a while, maybe. But what you can do with this app is you can star certain ones, and that becomes your personal collection. Even if you spend a few minutes every day, I promise you, it will have a profound effect on you. And it is, again, keep in mind this principle. Yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the actions that are consistent, even if they're small. So if you just take a small amount, make that your collection, but you do it consistently in the morning and then again in the evening. And this is before Maghrib prayer. And you read those again, the evening supplications. Lastly, before you sleep, there are supplications for that. These three, and this is any scholar of the heart, any spiritual doctor in the world will tell you that these are the, these are the main ones that you need to do to be spiritually healthy. All right? So the first part I said was we need to oxygenate our hearts. We need to give our hearts food and water. Okay. The second thing, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the second point I want to make is this: is mentally. So uh, there are ways that we feed our hearts and souls. There are ways that we feed our bodies, and there are ways that we feed our mind. And one of the ways to keep our mind healthy, and this is a principle that you will just take home with you, and that is that what you focus on grows. Uh, psychologically, the things that we focus on tend to become bigger and bigger. And so one thing that a person can do is shifting the focus of what it is that you focus on in your life each day. 
Now, there are, there are, everyone has, as, as, as those, you know, sisters mentioned before me, everyone has a in their life, right? Everyone does. Um, no one has it all good, but no one has it all bad either. See, the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran is inna ma'al usri yusra. What does it mean to say inna ma'al usri yusra? Can someone translate it for me? Say it again. Okay, anyone else? Okay, so I'm hearing different translations. One of the mistranslations that people have of this verse is after every hardship comes ease. After every hardship comes ease. But this ayah doesn't say in the bad. The word is ma'a. Now the word ma'a means alongside, with. With the hardship comes ease. This is a profound point. What it means is that at any given point in time, any hardship that you are given, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you ease at the same time. And if you look at linguistically the ayah, the hardship is singular and the ease is plural. And that's also a very profound point because what it means is that Allah never only gives us difficulty. Allah never only gives us struggle. Allah at the same time gives us yusr. And this is the plural of ease. The plural of ease. And then, and then again it is repeated. So the idea here is that at any given point, there is no one in their life that only has difficulty or only has ease. It's always a mix. And so what does shifting your focus mean? Shifting your focus is a mental exercise where it's about what is your focal point. See, there are people whose focal point is, for example, what is missing. Um, I give this example of two, two, two pictures, right? You have a boy on the top. Everyone heard my slice of cake example? There's a boy on the top holding one slice of cake, and he is beaming. He's so excited because he's got a piece of cake. And then there's a boy on the bottom who's holding an entire cake, and it's missing one slice. So he's sad. Can, can someone tell me the difference between the top and the bottom? First, first tell me who has more cake. The one on the bottom. But is he happy or sad? He's sad. So in this particular example, the difference between the two is not the amount of cake. It's the focal point. It's the fact that the one on the bottom is focused on what is missing. Whereas the one on the top is focused on what is there, what he has. Now what is this alluding to? This is alluding to the practice of gratitude. And, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because it has been shown, not just in, in the Qur'an, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّلَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Allah says that, that your, Lord, your Lord is telling you this, that if you are grateful, I will increase you. But interestingly enough, in psychological research, they are finding the power of gratitude. That gratitude, the practice of gratitude daily, has been shown to alleviate physical as well as psychological symptoms. And so this is something that we already have in our deen. That the practice of just writing down five things every day that you're grateful for. It, what it does is it's shifting, it's part of that shift of focus. The situation might be the same, but the focus is different. And what you focus on grows. And so the practice of gratitude. The other thing I want to mention when it comes to focus is how we cope and deal with our past. Now, the past um, is, is something that can be very painful. Many of us may have trauma even in our past. And, and the thing about dealing with and healing from a difficult or painful past is a few things. And this is, I'm going to just summarize this because I have just a few minutes. Um, there are two extremes in dealing with difficult or painful pasts. On the one hand, you have the people who tell you to put a band-aid on it. You know, just, just, just suck it up, you know, get over it, yeah, get over it, could be worse. These kinds of terrible things that people say that are not helpful, right? Um, and, and, and sometimes even cultures kind of uh, push this type of, put your happy face on type of attitude, right? Numb it. Just appear happy and everything will be okay. And this is a little bit like getting a gunshot wound and putting a band-aid on it. Are you going to heal that way? Yes or no, guys? No. Um, putting a, put a band-aid on a gunshot wound isn't going to make it heal, right? And you can't say time heals all wounds if you didn't address the wound. Does that make sense? And so there's that, 
there's that side of the extreme where, where wounds are not being addressed. And they cannot heal if they're not addressed. So part of healing is addressing the wound itself. And now how do you address it? Well, it depends on the situation. Sometimes it involves getting professional help. Sometimes it involves whatever, it depends on the situation. But it has to be addressed. It cannot be ignored and you expect that it's going to go away because again, a band-aid on a gunshot wound, it doesn't make it go. In fact, time is in fact going to, it's going to become infected. And then that infection could lead to an amputation. And so, so emotionally, it's the same thing with wounds. We have to address them. We have to heal them. We have to treat them. And then time can heal them. Does that make sense?